Thus far in this chapter, we've made an action and we've applied an action to an individual image open inside of Adobe Photoshop. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. That's actually kind of great. You click a button, boom, you got it done. But my thoughts about actions sometimes are like maybe hundreds of images. And I don't really want to open them one at a time and apply the action and then open the next one. You get it. I want to do something a little bit differently here. And we're going to talk about batch processing. Now, inside of your working folder, you have a folder and it's called Egypt Images. Now, it actually has the same four images that we're working with, and that's fine. I just put them in the folder if you kind of want to do this on your own. I would suggest maybe getting some of your own images and playing around with this. You do not need an image open, but you want to be in Photoshop. That's why we're here without anything open. And we do not need to come over here to our actions. What I want you to do is go up to the word File on the pull-down menu and go down to Automate. Go into Batch. Now in Batch, we've got to fill out the form. Number one, what is the action we want to apply? So we go here and say, well, I want my Egypt, and I want color correction and fresco. Where are they? Now, they can be in a folder. We don't have anything open, so there's no importing or open files. You can be in Bridge, too, if you have it open. We want a folder, and I know where mine is. This is what I did. I put mine on the desktop. Yours will be in your working folder for this chapter. So I'm going to say Choose and find it, and it will be on your desktop, and it will indeed be the name Egypt Images right there, and there they are. Click choose. Now you have to answer a few questions. Number one, override action open commands. Our action does not have an open in it. We created it with an image that was already open. If you click here, it's telling you your action has to have an open in it, or it's not going to open anything. I don't use that one very often, to be honest with you. I usually open an image, I perform what I want to that image, and then I close the action down. So that's saying, I will open the images in this folder even though you don't have an open in the action. Do you want to include any subfolders that are in the folder you're in? Up to you. The suppresses, I usually leave on. What they do is they warn you about things like color profile warnings. I don't want to stop on every image and answer a question. So I usually say suppress on that. Destination, this is important. You got actually three. None means make the change after you've opened it in Photoshop, but don't close it. Open the next one, open the next one. Now, if you have 100 images, that means you're potentially going to open 100 images in Adobe Photoshop. I don't know if that's going to work or not. None is when you've got a couple of images. You want to see them maybe before you save and commit. Save and close is another one. It will save and close them on top of the original. In other words, you won't have your originals anymore. I usually don't like that one either. I like a folder. The folder I'm going to choose, I'm going to click choose right here, is I have on my desktop a folder I call Action Holding. And there's nothing in it yet, but I always use that same folder. And that way, anytime I need to get to my images after I perform a batch, I know where they are. Just a suggestion. Click choose. So we got that done. Down here, we can override action save as. That's the same idea. Did you have a save inside of your action? We didn't. So it's not going to do that. It's going to save them in the folder. That allows us to retain our originals and have copies in the other folder. Down here, we can change the name if we want to. If you want it to be the same name with the same extension, just leave this alone. But if you click here, you can do things like serial numbers, dates, things like that, anything you want. I'm going to leave that alone. If you are doing a serial number, where do you want to start? We're not. Compatibility with Windows and Unix is typically what I turn on just in case. And stop for errors. Okay, you've got 400 images in one folder, and it's going to take, say, 15 seconds to do the action on one times 400. You know, it's a bit of time. I don't want to sit there on the off chance that one of them might have a problem and it's going to stop. I don't want it to stop for errors. So what I'm going to do is click here. I'm going to say log errors to a file, save as. I'll put mine on the desktop, I always do, and we'll call it, how about errors? Makes sense to me. Just a text file is all that is. Click save. Okay, we're ready. It knows where they are. It knows what we want to do. It knows where to put them. Click OK. Check it out.
each image is being processed and then closed because that's what we asked it to do. Now, if we get out of Photoshop, here's my desktop. And you can see here's the originals in Egypt images, and it placed the copies down here. Batch processing, to me, makes a whole lot of sense, especially if you do an action because you have a lot of images you want to apply to. Don't forget you got batch processing, but we're not done yet. Wait till the next lesson.